What is the best field guide for birds in North America? I'm gonna get into that right after this. Hello guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Eddie, I'm a wildlife biologist, and not only do I teach you about nature, but I teach you how to enjoy nature. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications. Whether you are just a casual observer of the birds right outside your kitchen window, or a dedicated birder traveling across North America to see as many rarities as you can, uh, not only is it beneficial, but it's also essential to have a field guide in your hand in North America, there is quite a diversity of bird guides to choose from, and we are very lucky to have that. So in this video, I'm going to go through all of the major best-selling bird guides out there, and I'm going to review them, their pros and cons. I'm first going to start out by saying that if you are new to bird watching, I would suggest that you really try to get used to using bird guides in their app form rather than paperback form. Because when you're in the field, you're going to want to have your hands free to use your binoculars, to use your camera. And often you can identify a bird a lot more quickly because uh, you just take your app and you search uh, the word, generally what you think the bird might be, and it'll narrow down your choices really fast rather than having to flip through all the pages. And also you can carry around multiple bird field guides with you at the same time because they're all on your phone. Which brings me to another point I want to make is that each field guide has its pluses and minuses. I don't think that there's any one best field guide, but the best field guide for you is just whichever one works for you. And another thing I want to mention is that some guidebooks use real life photos, some guidebooks use illustrations. I think that there's positives and negatives about using real life photos as opposed to illustrations. One positive about uh, using a photo, obviously, is that uh, you get to see what one bird of that species actually looks like in real life. However, the negative about that is it's only one bird and no two individuals of one species are ever going to look exactly the same. And even one individual can look a lot different in different photos based on the lighting, based on its posture. Whereas an illustrator is able to schematically illustrate what the average bird looks like of that species, of that plumage. Uh, sex. So I'm going to go through seven main general bird guides. Um, three of them are only in their paperback form and four of them are in paperback and app form. And then after that I'm going to go through some supplemental guides and apps that you can also use in the field. So let's get into it. The first guidebook I will examine is the Stokes guide uh, which is all photos with no illustrations. Some of the pros of this guide are that it has good photos of most all plumages of most birds in North America. And the descriptions of each plumage are very, very good. And they actually mention a lot of details about the subspecies of birds, which is pretty cool. I like to pay attention to subspecies just because I'm a super duper big bird nerd. Now some of the cons are that it has no illustrations and it doesn't really have any extra natural history or any other science about the birds themselves, which is not really a negative if you're only looking to identify the bird. But I do think that's pretty cool to have. And the biggest con I see is that it's only in its paperback form. It is not in its app form. Now on to our next field guide, which is the Kaufman Guide. It's a great field guide for beginners. Some of the pros are number one, it has really good advice and tips for how to go birding for beginners. You know, how to use binoculars, just generally how to identify birds. And it has these digitally enhanced photos, so the field marks are pointed out better. And another pro is that it does have some natural history about the birds, which is pretty cool. Now for the cons, I think there could be more diversity in the plumages, and there could be more detail uh, in terms of the field marks that it points out. And the biggest con, of course, is that it is not in app form yet. And the next guide is the National Geographic Guide. Even though it is not in its app form, I thought that it's relatively compact compared to other book guides. It has pretty good illustrations, um, but the negatives, obviously the biggest negative is that it's not in app form for the latest smartphones at the moment. They do have an app, but I have the newest iPhone. Uh, this video was recorded in January 2019. I can't get it on my phone, so that's why I'm presenting it in this video as uh, the book in its paperback form. So. That is a pretty big negative and I think they really have to change that. I do remember it was a pretty good app to use a few years ago. Another negative is it doesn't have much natural history about the birds 
and its illustrations were made by different people so so it's not like you have the same illustrator with consistency across different species and the last negative is i think the descriptions are a bit too brief so for the general guidebooks that are only available in paperback form those are your three now let's go into the apps i would recommend actually downloading all four of these on your phone all four of these apps have vocalizations that you can play uh, they have a tab that is a quote unquote similar bird tab that if you click that tab it'll show you similar species to the bird of the species profile that you're on on all of these you can search by family and alphabetically and you can also enter the bird species into some type of journal or list type thing i have another video where i go through the top five birding apps that you can use anywhere in the world and i just really suggest entering all of the species that you see into the ebird app itself but again it's your preference so the first one is peterson the pros of peterson are that i think the illustrations are pretty good. I don't think they miss any major field marks, but they're not as good as uh, Sibley, in my opinion, which I'll get to later. And it's really nice that they have all of these arrows pointing to all the field marks, which make it really easy to see what the field marks are that the book is describing. And another cool thing about this is it shows the original page of the book where it shows all of the different birds right next to each other instead of just one isolated bird. And it does go into pretty good depth with the different plumages of ages and sexes in the illustrations. And for many of the species, there are some good in-depth descriptions of the nests, nesting sites, uh, the breeding biology and behavior, and other bits of information about their natural history and conservation. One really big plus about the Peterson Guide is that you don't need internet connection, which can be an issue with other apps. Now, some of the cons are that, in my opinion, some of the illustrations do have their flaws. For example, some of the illustrations are just not exactly proportional and they might have some weird color shades and there's only one sound recording for each species while in the other apps that I'll mention they have multiple sound recordings. The next app that I'll get into is the Audubon app and the big pro about this app is it has an enormous amount of natural history compared to the other apps. For example it has really in-depth information about eggs, nesting, diet, feeding behavior and it uses photos only and not illustrations. It has really good photos, and it also has lots of vocalizations. Now for some of the negatives, uh, it does have no illustrations. You do need internet to be able to use this app. Now I view this as a huge negative because I know that in many places in the world you will not have uh, proper internet or phone service or whatever. Now the next app that I will get into is iBird Ultimate. And the positives about this app are that it has both illustrations and real life photos and the illustrations are very detailed and i think they are very beautiful and there is a field marks tab that you can push which allows you to uh, switch on and off the field mark labels uh, which i just think is kind of cool to use it has multiple vocalizations for each bird and you can also search birds by very fine details even the specific names of the feathers as you can see right here you do not need internet connection but to go over the negatives it is lacking in natural history and the descriptive information is in my opinion sort of brief compared to other guides the illustrations do not really show the birds in a neutral schematic way that really shows the entire bird uh, like Sibley or Peterson do. And last but not least is the Sibley Guide, which of course was written and illustrated by Sibley, who in my opinion is the Michael Jordan of North American birding. And just in my experience, I would say that most all expert American birders would agree that the illustrations are definitely the best and another reason why the illustrations are so good is because it is really nice that all the illustrations are done by him, only done by one person, because that means that the style is consistent across species, and it has pretty good descriptions of the birds. You do not need internet connection, but the biggest negative about this guide is it really doesn't have much other information, not much on natural history, conservation, and stuff like that. By the way, if you're liking this video, hit the like button, comment below what your favorite field guide is, and any other opinions you have. Okay, so that is it for the general field guides. Now I'm just going to briefly touch on some supplemental guides that you can use, both in paperback and app form. And one of them is the Kaufman Field Guide to Advanced Birding. And another one is Identify Yourself, written by Bill Thompson III. 
And both of these books are pretty similar in which they go through uh, some of the more advanced challenges when it comes to North American birding. They give you specific strategies how to identify different groups of birds that a general field guide will not give you. Another paperback guidebook series that you can take a look at uh, are the Crossley guidebooks. Unfortunately, I don't think there is one guidebook that is for all of birds of North America, but they do have a guidebook for birds of Eastern North America and other specific groups of birds. It is much different than any other guide I've ever had. It has these digitally enhanced photographs um, of birds and their habitats that are pretty cool because it kind of shows you how the sizes of birds change with distance. Another great guidebook to get better with warblers is the Peterson Guidebook to Warblers in North America. And this is a really great guidebook to have because there are so many species of warblers and they can definitely be a big challenge. And Peterson has a similar guidebook that focuses on hawks. But maybe my favorite supplemental guide is called Raptor ID. I believe it was a joint project between Hawk Watch International and the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. And as you can tell from the name, it focuses on raptors. And not only does it have really good information that will help you identify them, like its shape, its, its flight, its plumage, but it also has plenty of images. And maybe the coolest part of it is that it shows videos of raptors flying in the sky. And actually, I think this sets a great example for what all the other birding apps need. Another app I have used before is called Song Sleuth, which is sort of like the app Shazam, but instead of identifying music, it identifies bird calls. Of course, there is something about the merit of having the skill uh, to identify a bird on your own with your own ears, but I just think it's a cool app to check out. And another good app to use just to actively learn bird songs is Larkwire, which use sort of this game-based approach uh, to quiz you on bird songs, which is pretty cool. So guys, that's all I have for today. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. On this channel, I do app and gear reviews, natural history lessons, ecotourism travel guides, and a lot more that have to do with exploring nature and wildlife. Remember that exploring nature is always an adventure. Peace out.